Take me down to shining water, towns of grit and pride. Let me check my own soul. I've no this guy's trying to run my shots. Hopefully there's fewer snakes where you live, right? Well, welcome back. It's so good to see you again this week. I have so many great things to talk about. I'm going to share with you seven great tips that will help you find amazing shots, even in your neck of the woods, close to home, without having to drive halfway across the country. I'm going to take you out on a little location scouting with me, and you will not believe what I found this week. I promise it's not all just snakes. Okay, so my previous videos have you fired up to get out and start shooting landscape photography, right? You're ready to grab your camera, your batteries, your healthy snacks, and hit the road. But when you leave that door, that's when landscape photography kind of gets real. It's like, where do I even start? Where are the good shots? There's no beautiful locations close to me. I don't see anything amazing. I don't see anything beautiful. Well, if you follow these seven steps, these seven tips, I promise you will find great things to shoot close to home, even in your own backyard and within a short driving distance around you. And pretty soon you're going to become an expert on your area. You'll have more compositions than you even know what to do with. Number one, start in your own backyard. I love this, especially for the beginners out there because you can just get outside take some shots and you're only a few steps away from your house so that you can come back in, review your shots on the computer, see what you've got, see if you got it in focus, see if you like the composition, and if you don't, you can go right back out and shoot more. So starting in your own backyard is absolutely amazing. So that's absolutely step number one, is getting literally your own backyard. So this is where the journey begins, literally in your own backyard. Now I know a lot of folks don't have this kind of acreage. I'm really blessed to have this place. I can come out here and shoot anytime I want to. And I also, because it's my land, I get to see how it changes with all the different conditions, all the different seasons of the year, the different way the light hits in the morning versus in the evening, what it looks like with fog, what it looks like in full sun. We're out here today in absolute full sun. Now I know everyone has different varying sizes of property. You could have a little tiny postage stamp lot or you could have several acres. But find a tree. Maybe it's a, an ornamental tree that you've planted. Maybe it's an old oak that's been there for years. But find a tree or something that you can depend on to be an interesting composition that you can keep going back to in different seasons, different lighting conditions, different times of day, different weather conditions. This is where I set it for that pano with the morning fog and the cow sitting right over there. Right in that area. Sun come up over here. It was filtering through the morning fog and got that tree just before the fog left. It's unbelievable how different this place looks with fog, with full sun, winter, spring, summer, fall. This is a spot that I know to come back to. But here we are at one of my first locations that I ever shot during my landscape career. You see that pano kind of taking shape here? Yeah. In fact, I think I was set up on one of my very first mornings shooting right in here somewhere. Yeah right in here this is a location that I'll revisit I don't think I really nailed that morning shot but I love this oak probably should clean up some of these weeds down here but check out Lukey Duke swimming over there he knows how to stay cool so this is my favorite spot on my property to try to shoot astrophotography. I've got this nice pond. I actually have a barn over there that can kind of give me a subject. And I love this little dip here in the trees. You see that? 
this, the, the position of the Milky Way comes straight down. It goes like that. It comes straight down at certain times right in this little notch. Now, if the water's calm, which I'm hoping I can grab those conditions again, I may be able to have a reflection of the Milky Way in this water now that the, the water level's gone down um, from all the rain we had, and I can get my tripod further, further into this sink. I think I may come back out here and try it. I just love it that much. I may bring my new 14 to 30, which I'm filming with right now, and come out here and try it out on an astrophotography scene. So if it's in the video, then it worked. I'll have to admit it was really challenging to stand there perfectly still for this image because I wanted to get the reflection of the stars in the water but every little movement in the water created ripples and that caused the stars to move. So I had to be perfectly still in my boots, even as snakes bumped against me around my feet. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> this guy's trying to ruin my shots. A few times I desperately wanted to turn on my headlamp just to check and make sure it wasn't a water moccasin, but still just a regular old water snake. But I had to just trust that the boots would protect me and that I was fine. I just needed to be still. So I endured through this image and I hope you enjoy it because it really took some effort to get it. Number two is go just a little bit further than the boundaries of your fence. Or if you have a lot of acreage, just get out on that acreage. Ask permission of a neighbor, a rancher, a farmer, somewhere around you, ask permission. I've found that a lot of people, if you just knock on the door and say, hey, I love your property, it's absolutely beautiful, would you mind if I explore it a little bit for photography? Most of the time they're like, Oh, absolutely, that's fine. I've even had people say, look, you don't have to ask me for permission anymore. Anytime I see your truck, I'll know it's you. Just come on out, you can take photos anytime you want to. So step two is go a little bit further beyond just your own yard and explore your neighborhood. Go to the end of those walking trails. A lot of neighborhoods have those kinds of things. Parks that are close by. Explore those areas and really get familiar with them. Number three is get out often lighting changes, weather changes, the seasons change. The locations that you explore can look completely different at different times of day. Set your alarm, get up super early, and look outside. See what kind of cloud cover you have. You may find something amazing today that wasn't even there yesterday just because of the way that the lighting has changed and the conditions have changed. I find things on my farm that change dramatically. Now let's expand just a little bit. Number four is to explore nearby destinations beyond the boundaries of your own fence. These are places like state parks, or for those people who are fortunate enough to live by one, a national park, come on. These are here for a reason. So if you're close to a place like that, chances are you're gonna have some amazing photography opportunities. Now the reason it's important to explore these areas and really get familiar with them is that you're gonna find really cool little places that become your favorites. And now, anytime that there's a weather event, conditions are right, there's amazing clouds for a sunset, or maybe it's that one week of the year, you know, when the leaves change color, you're not gonna to have to go to this park and wander around and hope to find a location because you're already gonna be familiar with them. You can go straight to your spot and really start just capturing all these amazing shots and not waste any time because you have done your homework and you've explored that park inside and out. Today I'm headed out to Broken Bow and any day that I'm going to Broken Bow is a good day because I absolutely love it out here. Broken Bow is a beautiful lake in southeast Oklahoma. It's a kind of a mountainous lake. It's a deep water lake. The downstream area has cold water enough to keep trout people go fly fishing down there all year round. There's bald cypress trees along the shores of the, the stream, the downstream area. There's rocks. 
and I'm just so fortunate to be close to a place like that. And a lot of great photographers end up actually moving to places that offer immense beauty. I was just out in Big Sur in California and there's just so much beauty that the West Coast has to offer. But what I want to challenge you to do is find that area of beauty around your neck of the woods. Whether you're in the Midwest, whether you're on the East Coast, up North, wherever you are, Texas, find those little areas around you that are beautiful. And literally start in your own backyard because my contention is that if you can get where you just naturally find beautiful compositions and can do great photography in your own backyard, even if it's a place that people might think is boring or mundane, then you're going to be so much more well prepared when you actually do have a chance to visit somewhere like Moab or the Pacific Northwest or the Grand Canyon or say you've got a trip coming up to Hawaii. So today I'm doing an exercise that I want to encourage you to do and that's to get out and explore and learn all of the characters in the story like I'm doing today for Broken Bow. I'm going to take little mental notes of the, the neat trees that I find, areas where I may get a good sunrise, areas where I may find a fantastic sunset. I'm not ruling out getting some shots today. You know, of course, any day that I'm out, I'm hoping to get a good shot. But today it's really about location scouting and just really getting to know Beaver's Bend and Broken Bow a little bit better. And I encourage you to do the same thing in your area. And what's gonna happen is each and every time you go back, you'll get to these great compositions quicker. You'll be able to anticipate how the light is gonna look. You'll be able to pull up the weather and see, oh, today's foggy this is going to be a perfect time to get down there and, and grab that that shot of that tree in the in the downstream area you know so you can actually start having a little more insight about your area and sooner or later you're going to grab some amazing shots and who better to grab those shots from your area than you because you're actually there so i'm going to see what i find today in broken bow and uh, I have to say I'm really looking forward to this sunset too because it looks like we've got some little cumulus clouds, maybe a few high clouds kind of forming on the, the western horizon. So I don't know. I'm just looking forward to seeing what happens today. But anyway, any day in Broken Bow is a good day. I can see the stream. I see tent campers. I see some trees. I don't really see any bald cypress out in the water much. People are looking at me like I'm creepy. No, I'm not. I'm not looking at your daughters. I'm checking out shoot locations. <laughs> Uh, there's some young girls over there. I guess I do look pretty creepy driving that slow. Sometimes you don't realize it, but you are that person. The person, the creepy person driving really, really slow for no apparent reason because they don't know what you're doing, right? Number five is explore all the trails in your park. These are like little highways that will take you around to the key areas that people really want to see. These could be vistas, overlooks, really neat trees, rock features, waterfalls. These trails have been beaten down for years for a reason. And I would highly encourage you to explore all the trails completely to the end. Because how are you going to know that there's not an amazing composition at the end of that trail unless you've walked all the way to the end? Okay, so I've walked the entire tree trail. I've taken inventory on a few spots, but actually I misread the trail map. It said 1.6 miles so i thought i would be going 1.6 miles all the way in turned out that was round trip so this was a very short kind of lackluster trail towards the end but the first part of the trail is actually quite special especially along this stream and i can only imagine how this is going to look in the fall i think i may be coming back to this place but i did have quite a bit of fun flying my drone up and down this creek so I ended up getting some pretty good shots, but I did have to wait for a group of sorority girls, but uh, they were having a blast taking pictures exactly where I was about to fly my drone. No kidding. 
I got the drone hooked up, ready to go, and here come this troop of sorority girls. And uh, anyway, I don't own this place, so I had to just sort of be patient and wait for them to move after taking about 2,000 selfies. But eventually they moved, and I got my shot. All right, I've said it before, and I cannot stress enough how important it is to linger. Number six is linger in your location, Scout. Because just when you think, oh, the sunset's over, I'm hungry, you know, I've been out here all day, I'm hot, I'm sweaty, I'm tired, I'm thirsty, hang in because God may not be finished yet. The show just may be getting started. Watch how the color changes 20, 30 minutes after the sunset. And what if the, the sky's clear and you get an amazing vista overlooking water with the Milky Way like I found? I just cannot believe what I found on my last location scout in Broken Bow. Honestly, I was not expecting to get this image. But when you're out location scouting and you're there, you're kind of lingering. You just never know what God's going to put together for you. And you could come away with an amazing shot. I posted this one before this video is going live and it so far has become already one of my most popular shots. And it kind of brings up this little expression, this saying that I'm trying to coin as of now. Hopefully it's original. And that is, shoot a story only you can tell and print an image only you can sell. It's true that when you go through the effort and you're there, it can be a really, really lonely place. But at that moment, as those conditions are happening, you're possibly the only human in the world who's there who can tell that story at that time. So whether you plan on selling your prints or not, you can still post them on social media so other people can enjoy them. You can print them and put them on your wall. But no matter how many years go by, when you see that image, it can take you back to the story that you lived in that moment. And that's one that only you can tell. And that's what I think is so special about landscape photography is that every single situation is unique and special. And that's why we're here with our gear lugging it around so we can capture it. Finally, number seven, this one's huge, and that is get to know other enthusiasts in your area. Connect with other photographers. There's professional photographers that are doing exactly what you're doing that are out there exploring these locations, and they can give you great insights on some of their favorite locations. People are nice. I found if you just connect with them, they're not stingy with their locations. They want to help you. There's Facebook groups. I'm blown away at how many different geographic centered groups there are for these different locations around parks. There's enthusiasts for just Broken Bow. There's tons of groups and I've tagged Broken Bow in one of my Instagram posts and I ended up getting a, a comment from a lady who ends up owning two cabins in Broken Bow. We have a mutual friend, Randy Sander. He's a, a phenomenal photographer in Broken Bow. And now I've established a connection with him. We talk about locations. He critiques my shots. I talk about his shots. And we've just gotten a, a great friendship. We've never met face to face yet, but we talk all the time on Messenger. It's amazing when you just tap into that community of other photographers and people around your area, how much information's out there. This last week of exploring locations and scouting for me has absolutely just been a phenomenal adventure. And as you're out there, you're going to explore an adventure with God that you just never even thought possible. Because when you're out in the wilderness with Him, you're out like I was the other night in Broken Bow. It was so calm and so serene. And after all the people left, I was there by myself. And underneath this sky, on this huge lake, under this star-swept sky, I felt so tiny. I felt so unimportant and insignificant, but just to know that God was there. He knows every day of our lives. He knew when the foundation of the earth was formed that that night I would be standing on that rock. And it has to be 
amazing for him just to watch it all happen and to know I cannot wait for Jason to see what I have planned for him tonight. I'm so glad that he's got that camera out because I've been waiting for a long time just to show him what glory I've created tonight with this star-swept sky, and I just can't wait for him to capture it. Isn't it awesome that God knows what we're going to shoot for the rest of our lives? He knows every single image that we're going to take. And I also think he's got a great sense of humor when you're out there and you're really kind of getting in his world, you know, in the wilderness. Like I was shooting that, that shot last night at my pond. It was so freaky to have to stand there perfectly still knowing that there's snakes swimming around my feet. As a landscape photographer, I know that that's when it gets real. When you're out in the wild and you've got mosquitoes and you've got spiders building webs because they just want to find food and they see your tripod as, hey, this is a, a, already a triangle. All I have to do is just build a web in the middle and I can catch insects. And so I have spiders crawling up my tripod across my lens. I have to use my little headlamp and look at the lens and be like, oh my gosh, you're back. Get off here. Get out of here. I'm trying to shoot photos. It's a wild world out there. And God is with you. And I think he has a great sense of humor, especially for landscape photographers, because he's like, oh yeah, this guy, he's going to come down in my pond. Well, uh... He is going to leave the comforts of his air-conditioned house for a while, and he's going to see what's real down here in this pond. But anyway, I hope you've really enjoyed this episode. I hope that it helps you find wonderful things to shoot really close to home. Please subscribe to my channel, and if you don't mind, click that little like and click that little bell so that you'll know every single time that I come out with a new episode. Until next time... I hope that we can all get out and explore God's creation with childlike wonder, and I'll see you next time on the next episode.